Lately, a lot of you have asked that I share my portfolio allocation for 2024, and I'm happy to do that. But before I get into it, please keep in mind that what makes sense for me may not make sense for you. We all have unique circumstances, different tolerance for risk, different objectives, different liquidity requirements, and so on. I am a relatively young millennial, I have a very long investment horizon, a high tolerance for risk, I come from a real estate background, and I also have experience working for a private equity company. For all these reasons, I invest very heavily in real estate investment trusts, in private equity asset management companies, in alternative investments, and fixed income only makes a tiny portion of my portfolio. Hey everyone, this is Yossi, I'm a CFA charter holder, but not a financial advisor, so make sure to do your own research. I run a small investment firm that specializes in REIT investing, and in today's video I'm going to present to you my entire portfolio allocation for 2024. But before I get started, could you please do me a huge favor and click the like button, that really helped me a lot to produce this content for you. Thank you so much for all your support. So firstly, here I want to talk about real estate investment trusts or REITs, because they represent about 50% of my portfolio. 50% is probably way too much for most of you, but here you need to keep in mind that I come from a real estate background, I also run a REIT investment company, and I like to invest in what I cover. Moreover, I think that REITs are today offering a historic opportunity for investors because their valuations have dropped to the lowest level since the great financial crisis. Today, it's not uncommon to find REITs that are priced at 30, 40 or even 50% discount to their net asset values. And so what this essentially means is that you get to buy $1 of real estate for just 50 cents on the dollar. If I offered you the opportunity to buy good real estate that's cash flowing and professionally managed at just 50 cents on the dollar, you'll probably jump on the opportunity, but because REITs are publicly listed, investors are much more reluctant in buying them. But such valuations are truly unusual. Typically, REITs are priced at small premiums to their net asset values, and this is well justified when you consider that REITs provide liquidity, diversification and professional management, and many other advantages on top of the real estate. So I don't think that this window of opportunity is going to last for much longer and I want to make the most out of it. The last two times REITs were this cheap, they rapidly recovered thereafter and richly rewarded investors who had the courage to buy them following the crash. In just over one year following the pandemic, REITs more than doubled in value and about two years following the great financial crisis, REITs nearly tripled in value. I think that once again we're going to see quite a few REITs double or even triple in value in the coming years as they recover from the recent crash and I've structured my portfolio to heavily profit from this. And best of all, I think that there is a very strong catalyst already in the near term that could push REIT share prices a lot higher. I'm here referring to the likely interest rate cuts that we will have in 2024. Today, most major banks, including the Bank of America, JP Morgan, UBS, Deutsche Bank, and many others are predicting very significant rate cuts by mid of 2024. And I think that this will significantly help the market sentiment of REITs, given that they crash because of rising interest rates. If you now remove this concern and interest rates return to lower levels, they should rally a lot higher. So to give you an example of a read that I like, I want to highlight BSR read, ticker symbol BSRTF in the US and HOM.U in Canada. I like to use BSR as an example because it's very simple. It owns a very desirable portfolio of apartment communities in rapidly growing Texan markets like Dallas, Austin and Houston. These markets are expected to enjoy very significant population and job growth over the long run. But despite that, this rate is today priced at a 40% discount to its net asset value. Its cash flow yield is about 8%. Out of that, the rate is paying 5% in the form of dividends to shareholders, and the remaining cash flow is reinvested in share buybacks to create more value and deleveraging to de risk the balance sheet. The management has significant skin in the game. They are some of the biggest shareholders of the company, and they are buying more shares with their personal money as well. Over time, as the market sentiment for REITs improves, I expect its share price to converge much closer to its net asset value, which could unlock up to 70% upside potential. Then after REIT comes stocks, which represent about 20% of my portfolio today. My stocks are mainly simple businesses that I think I can understand slightly better than the rest of the market. Many of them are alternative asset management companies and having worked in this field myself, I think that I'm well positioned to identify good opportunities in this specific sector. Asset management businesses essentially earn fees for managing capital for others. 
And if you can convince other investors to let you invest for them, it can be a very profitable business because it's highly scalable, it's high margin, and the fee income that it generates is highly sticky. The biggest alternative asset manager today is called Blackstone, and it has been exceptionally rewarding to its shareholders since going public. But today, Blackstone is getting really big with about 1 trillion of assets under management, and so I expect its future growth to be quite a bit slower than in the past. The key here is to find the next Blackstone before it scales its assets under management. I own several of these companies, and a good example is called Patria Investments, ticker symbol PAX. In a previous video, I've described it as the Blackstone of Latin America. It's the leader in that region of the world with about 30 billion worth of assets under management. I think that in a decade from now, it will manage about 10 times as much capital. And despite enjoying these very strong growth prospects, it's today priced at a low valuation and a high 8% dividend yield. If you want to learn more about this specific opportunity, I'll put a link to my video about it in the description of this video. Then after REITs and stocks comes alternative investments. Alternatives are private investments that are far riskier, but potentially also a lot more rewarding. My alternative investments are mainly concentrated in two things. Firstly, I've invested in a real estate development project in Tallinn, Estonia, where I have lived for several years and I know the market really well. I think that Estonia is set to become the Luxembourg of Northern Europe, where wealthy people and foreign entrepreneurs move to save on their taxes and benefit from Europe's best business environment. Already today, they have the most unicorns per capita with giants like Bolt, uh, Wise, Pipedrive, or even Skype emerging from this tiny country. In just 30 years since regaining their independence from the Soviet occupation, they've already become a richer country on a per capita basis than countries like Portugal and Greece, and they're still just getting started. Therefore, I think that the future is very bright for this country, and I want to participate in its growth. I believe that the right properties in the capital city of the country are going to gain significant value over the coming decade, and that's how I'm positioning myself to profit from this opportunity. And then secondly, I also own a stake in a private company called Farm Together. Farm Together is the leading crowdfunding platform today for farmland investments. I think that every investor should hold a farmland allocation in their portfolio, whether that's just for the sake of diversification, inflation protection, or to hedge against a black swan. In many ways, farmland is an improved version of gold because it's actually a productive asset that generates something, earns you rental income, and steadily gains value over the long run. You've probably heard many big name investors like Warren Buffett, Bill Gates, the big short Michael Burry talk about the benefits of farmland investments, but unfortunately today it's very difficult for individual investors to access this asset class. Farm Together solves this issue and I have not found any other solution that's better for individual investors. I got involved with the company when they were far smaller and I still think that their best years are ahead of them. In case you want to check it out and potentially open an account at Farm Together, I'll also put a link to it in the description of this video. I'm not getting paid to promote them, I just think that this is an interesting option for a lot of investors. Then finally, I have about 10% of my portfolio invested in fixed income investments. For a lot of investors, fixed income investments like bonds are meant to provide steady streams of liquidity, but in my case, the primary purpose is to act as a pool of liquidity in case of a market crash. This allows me to then sell some of my fixed income investments to buy more bonds or REITs at heavily discounted prices. Today, I own two types of fixed income investments. Firstly, I own some publicly listed baby bonds and preferred shares that are mostly backed by real asset heavy companies such as MLPs, BDCs or even REITs. In today's market, I'm able to commonly earn a 7 to 8% yield from good companies with limited downside risk. A good example here would be the Series O preferred shares of Gladstone Commercial, which are yielding over 8% and are really well covered. Then secondly, I also own a portfolio of private loans that are mostly backed by real assets once again. These are mostly bridge loans, they are not publicly listed, there is no liquidity, they have a short duration, and so naturally they are quite a bit riskier, but they also come with much higher interest rates at about 12% on average. In such high yield lending, it's inevitable that you occasionally suffer some defaults, but despite that, I've managed to earn roughly 11% average annual total returns over the past many years since I've started investing in these private loans. 
There are a lot of different crowdfunding platforms that allow you to make these type of investments. I'm mostly using one called Estate Guru, and I will also put a link to it in the description of this video in case you want to check it out. So to recap here, I have about 50% in REITs, 20% in stocks, 20% in alternatives, and 10% in fixed income. I think that this specific portfolio allocation makes sense for me given my unique background, my high tolerance for risk, my high return objectives, and my multi-decade investment horizon. Now, if you want to access my entire REIT portfolio, feel free to join High Yield Landlord, which is my REIT newsletter, for a two-week free trial. I'll put a link in the description of this video. And finally, once more, if you could please click the like button. That really helped me a lot to grow this channel. Thank you so much for your support and see you at my next one. Bye-bye.